Hello, my name is Greg Belser, and this is Advent 2022. We are uh, working our way through a devotional guide that our church has produced, Let Earth Receive Her King. And uh, we've had 35 different authors, and they're pictured here on the back, from our church, uh, write a contribution to this devotional guide, and we're reading through it together through Advent. And today we come to Day 13, our devotional is authored by Lisa Gunn, the wife of Philip Gunn, a proud Fort Worth, Texas native and a proud Baylor Bear. Thank you, Lisa, for uh, writing today's devotional entitled God Leads the Humble. Our focus will be Psalm 25, Psalm 25. So if you have a copy of the scripture, I would encourage you to find it, read along with me, and then I will read Lisa's devotional and uh, think with you about God leads the humble. Here's Psalm 25, one through 10. A Psalm of David. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been, of, been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Psalm 25, one through 10. Here is Lisa's devotional. The humble, God leads them. God teaches them. We all want to be them. The humility that pleases God is a heart that hears the word of Christ and responds in faith. That according to Romans 10, 17. In spite of the trials and tribulations that come from his hand. Imagine with me, you've been thinking about the future, made a plan. Excitement builds, expectations mount. Now imagine your plan comes crashing down around you through no fault of your own, a trial, a tribulation. You've lost control of the situation. How do you respond? Fall apart, blame others, have a pity party, lose faith in God, scramble to regain control, or is there another option? One message, two responses. Herod was planning for the future. He was building, designing, and reigning in Jerusalem. But wise men came with unimaginable news. How would he respond? He scrambled, he schemed, he killed. He bowed his back and stiffened his neck and refused to submit to God's plan. He was not led by God in what is right or taught his ways. Psalm 25, verse nine. Mary was planning for the future. She had been preparing, organizing, and thinking through her life with Joseph. Then the unimaginable news came. How did she respond? She bowed her head in humble submission to the plan that God laid out before her, in spite of the relational and societal difficulties that lay ahead. She was led by God to what was right and taught his ways. Her heart responded in faith, that God would do all he had promised, that according to Luke 1, 45. She knew that, quote, all the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies, that according to Psalm 25, 10. Even the path that led a virgin to bear the Christ child. Amen. Thank you, Lisa, for that devotion. Yes, we are to respond in faith. We're to trust the Lord, rejoice in his steadfast love and his faithfulness and to obey him in all things. So when 
change comes or when surprise comes or when the unexpected happens in our life, we are to respond in faith. God does, in fact, lead the humble. We are to be just exactly that. I hope you are seeking the Lord today with humble submission to him and to his plan, to his will, to his desire for you. As God gives us grace, may we do that together. Let me pray for us and uh, thank God for this day. Lord, it is a, a good opportunity again for us to be reminded that you lead, you lead the humble we want to be that. We aspire to that. We know that it's the nature and character of God, of Christ, our Savior, and is to be of that, uh, is to be that of his followers. So we are to be humble. Pray that you'll help us to seek to live such, such a way, even today. So no matter what comes, may we submit to you. The news, Father, may be what we choose or hope, or the news may be quite the contrary. But either way, our God is sovereign, he's king, he's Lord over all our circumstances. May we honor you, humbly follow you, even as Mary. And we ask for your grace in this today. So we read the Psalm, we are reminded that you give grace to the humble and you lead us. And may that be said of us today as we follow you. Thank you for loving us, for giving us Christ. It's in his name we pray, amen. Well, have a good day and God bless you all.